You are listening to the Biblical Counseling Podcast, where we believe the Bible is sufficient and answers life's problems. I'm your host, Pastor Jeff Christensen. This podcast is for everyone in the body of Christ, staff pastor, church leader, caring homemaker, the responsible businessman, everybody. All of us are called to offer counsel regularly, and we every day need a word of counsel from the Lord. So these episodes are designed to assist you in learning to give godly counsel, also to develop discernment in evaluating counsel that you receive. So it's my prayer that these podcasts, that these episodes will enlarge your vision of the Lord Jesus Christ as a wonderful counselor. God bless you. Grab your Bibles. Let's get started. See you on the inside. In this podcast, I want to show you what the scripture teaches in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, that fruit, fruitfulness is more excellent than giftedness. Yes, gifts of the Holy Spirit flowing upon and in and through a life to touch many is beautiful, but fruit is more excellent. I want to give you that evidence from the Bible, 1 Corinthians 12, 31, then we'll look at Chapter 13, the beautiful love chapter of 1 Corinthians. But earnestly, 1 Corinthians 12, 31 says, But earnestly desire the best gifts, yet I show you a more excellent way. And so right away, we are being uh, given clarity in the scripture, the fully inspired, authoritative, inerrant, sufficient word of God. That is, you know, the, uh, the inerrancy the sufficiency, the inspiration of the the scripture. It's our uh, final authority. This sufficient word is telling us to earnestly desire the best gifts. We're to desire the gifts of the spirit as described in the scripture. And I know people will abuse and make up things and call it a gift of the spirit when it's really a work of the flesh. We want to be careful about that. We earnestly desire the best gifts, exercise them within biblical guidelines. But yet, Paul says, I show you a more excellent way. So to the whole body of Christ, here's an instruction. Earnestly desire the better gifts. And we're going to talk about that after uh, chapter 13 and chapter 14. But we're called to decide... You know, we're commanded, we're to desire spiritual gifts. And especially that you might prophesy. We should all want the greatest place in the body of Christ or give, let me say it a different way, give the greatest place to the greater gifts. In other words, there are some gifts that are less critical and others that are most um uh, we can't do without of them. Can't do without them. <laughs> so the implication is we should all want to give the greatest place to the greatest gifts and the lesser place to the lesser gifts. Kind of in a human body. Verse 31 says, along desiring the best gifts, we desire the best gifts to work among us. And it's a high priority in the work of God. And so we give more emphasis Important gifts like prophecy. Or we would call it preaching today. It's f- it's forth telling the word of God with the endued power of the Holy Spirit coming upon the man behind the pulpit with the Bible open, proclaiming, declaring the word of God. It's prophetic in its forth going, or I should say uh, foregoing. It's not forth telling. Typically, we see prophecy in two ways. One is is foretelling the future, and the other is foretelling what's already written in the Scripture. Not forth, not foretelling the future, but proclaiming forth the Word of God. But I show you a more excellent way. What's more excellent than spiritual gifts? It's love. That's what we're going to talk about right now, is love. What is love? In the spiritual category... It is a fruit of the Spirit. The fruit 
of the Spirit is love. It's more excellent than gifts. It's fruit. And you look at verse 1, uh, 1 through 3, it proves the priority of spiritual fruit even over the gifts. Gifts have to do with ability, with an outward capacity to function. And it should be a capacity to function, and we don't want to do it without this characteristic of love because that would be the fruit of maturity. If that, if we did not have love, it would be mere fleshly and it would be a disaster, actually. One of the greatest problems in the church of Jesus Christ right now, as I look across the landscape, and I know men, I know women, you know men, you know women, you've, you've seen it. Maybe you have, maybe you haven't. I have. And one of the greatest problems in the church is talent, gift, and ability allowed to lead without character, fruit, maturity, and love. And sometimes it looks like character, fruit, maturity, and love. But that isn't what's going on in the heart. No, you know, everybody can make, can fumble, can stumble, can fall, can mess up. But there's the the heart, you know, like you, the, having a heart like David. David really blew it, but he had the heart of the Lord. And so you want to be, you know, as even David said, you know, man looks at the outward appearance, but God looks at the inward. He looks at the heart. And I think that's a big problem in the church today is the lack of discerning uh, flesh versus the spirit in church leadership, but also in the pew. A lot of times in the pews, uh, it's just, uh, you know, it's a challenge because of the biblical illiteracy in in our culture today. But ministry leaders, um, I think it's a big problem right now. It's disastrous. Gifts are wonderful. Praise God for them. Without the fruit, the value of the gift is gone. 1 Corinthians 13, 1 through 3. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I have become a sounding brass or a clanging cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy, and I understand all mystery and knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I can remove mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, but I have not love, it profits me nothing. Nothing. It's kind of, it's either noise, (laughs) nothing, or love. Talent, gift, ability, instead of character, fruit, and maturity. That's how you can describe this section. Talent, gift, and ability versus character, fruit, and maturity. And I praise God for the enabling work of the Holy Spirit, the functioning, the outward, the activity, uh, the work that God does, and I believe it is a, a work upon a man or woman of God in, uh, inside of their heart, their character, who they are, and out through their hands. There is a work that is beautiful. But if there is not maturity, if there is not love, if there is not fruit of the Spirit, it is. it can be a disaster. A lot of lives can be harmed and hurt because of that. And so you have to have the maturity and the love so that there is fruit of the Spirit. And these gifts functioning here, the tongues of men and angels, prophecy, even understanding all mysteries, gift of knowledge, all faith, people enabled supernaturally to sacrificially give their body to be burned. That's a gift of martyrdom. If you have all those things and you're able to function in an outward and it's an amazing gifting, 
but you don't have love, you don't have the fruit of the Spirit, here's what it amounts to, a bunch of noise, a clanging cymbal, or nothing. It profits me nothing, verse 3. You know, if I, you know, if I can remove mountains, I don't have love, I'm nothing. You know, if I have the tongues of, of men and of angels and I have not love, I'm, I'm a sounding brass, I'm a clanging cymbal. It's noise. And a lot of the abuse in the church, that's all it is. But that doesn't mean we throw away the genuine. And I think that's what happens so often when, when there's gifts of the Spirit that are the activities of it. And just because somebody's abusing it as a clanging cymbal and a sounding brass does not... Um, does not, you know, they're, they're basing it on experience and not exposition. That's my opinion. And I believe it's biblical. So if I have all of those things and I'm able to function, but I don't have the fruit of the spirit, it amounts to nothing. And that is a heavy truth. You would think that gifts are, are more important because of their spectacular outward function that grips hearts and lives emotionally and and gets things done you'd think the that's the most important issue is enablements i mean faith that can cast a mountain into the sea but if you don't have love it's nothing <laughs> love is the fruit of the spirit fruit it's it's life pulsating developing in spiritual life, in me and through me, it's more important than ability to function. I mean, that's just what the Bible teaches. Fruit is just the life developing, his life developing in me and through me. It's more important than the, the function. Sometimes we look at it and we say, well, that's not very efficient. And it is not very logical. And, it, you know, and, and we're biblical about it and all of that. But sometimes... God is not is not into necessarily efficiency, effectiveness, as we would count it. And I don't think it needs to be one or the other. It should be both, but the priority is fruit. I think if the character develops in you and in... So this is what we're doing, okay? Now we're talking about biblical counseling. How does this apply? We want to see character develop in those that we're discipling so that the gifts are in their proper place. The character of Christ, Galatians 5, 22, 23, the fruit of the Spirit, we can look at them again, love, joy, peace, all of that is developing in lives by the work of the Holy Spirit. And the more that that is developing, listen, the more safely, wisely, effectively we could use the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And so I think that's an important topic to cover. Now, we're going to look at the uh, chapter 14. We're going to move right through and talk about abuses commonly attributed to the Holy Spirit. I'm going to wait till next time to cover that because that's an important issue. And I think we've covered what needs to be covered here. Listen, we have what's called the Biblical Counseling Academy. And you could go to biblicalcounselingacademy.com. And you can make an appointment with me if you'd like to talk about enrolling. And it's what's called a discovery call. It's just a call that I want to hear your heart. I want to hear your story. I want to know, is God working in your life and you want to be equipped? There's a, a calling on your life. That's pretty much how I do the application for this diploma program. And remember, this is not... Um, it's a tuition-based, college-level academy where you get a syllabus, you get a textbook, you get lectures, you take exams. So the student that is endorsed as a biblical counselor, as a certified biblical counselor, has gone through some minimal training. We can get you trained and certified in a year if you have the capacity to study Pretty much the equivalent of, I would say, six semester units um, per, per quarter. So there's four quarters in the year. You know, you're going to have about, you know, the equivalent of about 20 semester units in a year. If you, can, if you can put that much time 
I can get you over the finish line. You earn a diploma. After the diploma, you apply for certification and you become a board certified biblical counselor. So you have both a diploma, which is a nice document that you can frame and you get a transcript of courses that can be transferred to a university. There's a few universities that will accept the Biblical Counseling Academy uh, in transfer toward a master's degree or bachelor's degree. But nevertheless, the most important thing that we do is get you over the finish line. If you've been struggling to finish your certification, that's where we specialize. We help you, nudge you forward, get you across the finish line. That's what I do. I'm the Dean of Biblical Counseling. And as the Dean, I have several professors, uh, Dr. Howard Eyrick. We have uh, Dr. Bill Hines. Uh, we have a multitude of other lectures in, in counseling theology and in ministry. Calvary Chapel pastors will come in and, and teach on eschatology, uh, pneumatology, the study of the Holy Spirit, eschatology, the study of end times, how that applies to scripture or how that applies to counseling, uh, conflict resolution, ecclesiology, the study of the church, uh, conflict resolution. And in, in any case, we have several of those, a, a theology of biblical counseling. So you're going to have textbooks, you're going to have lectures, you're going to have guest lectures, uh, you're going to also have exams that you have to complete, which are open book, open Bible, even open professor. You can ask me anything. We grade them. I have two professors grade them. First one grades them, kicks it back to you. You make your corrections. We send it to a second one, and they kicks it back. And then you finalize your... See, everybody passes. You just have to, uh, you know, don't expect your first round of exam answers to get approved. And then we do 50 hours of supervised counseling. You do that at your local church. You don't leave your local church. It's 100% online. You have a mentor at your local church or a supervisor at your local church. But we take a look at your, uh, your after action or after you counsel. We have a case reporting form where after you have a, a, a sit-down counseling situation with somebody, you fill out a form. You bring that to us, and we go over it together. We help you improve. And you do that for 50 hours. And then we, then you're vetted. <laughs> you're proven. And then we, you know, we obviously you have to have a background check. You fill out an application. And then we take that portfolio, that packet of completed coursework and exams, and we bring it before the board of directors of the International Association of Biblical Counselors. That's what that board does is they, they will endorse you and give you a certification that is annual. Every annual, every year you have to renew it. Make sure you're, you're still walking with the Lord every year. And it's endorsing. So it's important, uh, you know, that we know who you are. But first is the training, then is the certification. If you're interested, set up a, a phone appointment with me, which is called a discovery call, and, and let me know. Now, it's tuition-based, so you're going to have to be ready to enroll with tuition and buy books, and you're also going to have to put in, you know, 5, 10 hours, 15 hours a week, depending on how quickly you need to get this done. Some people spread it out, and that's okay. You know, if you got obligations, you got a family, you got a job, you got school, you got other, you got other social activities, you know, and you're not ready to just dive in full time, well, we'll extend it, right? But there are people that are listening that say, you know, I've been, I've been meaning to do this and I just want to, you know, knock it out. And that's what you can do at the Biblical Counseling Academy. So if that's you, I invite you to apply. And we are opening up a cohort all the time we have open enrollment. And so I'd just love for you to be part of the Biblical Counseling Academy. You know, right now we have a dozen professors and, and about 55 students. And it just keeps growing and growing. And as they graduate and are certified, 
we have a database where you, you can uh, put your name on that database and people can seek you out for counseling in person or even online. So if that's a call that you're called to make disciples and you just feel, you know, we have several, I think at least a dozen pastors and leaders, those that are full-time vocational ministry. Some are senior pastors, Calvary Chapel senior pastors. And, you know, what they find is most of what they do is counsel. And they're like, I need to get equipped. And some pastors are like, no, I want to raise up a team. Here, Jeff, enroll these guys in your academy and get them raised up. Others, I'll help any pastor that wants me to put a program. You could do it in-house. If I was a pastor, I would build an in-house program, but not everybody can do that. And they're just not, they're, they've, they're spread too thin. And so that's where I come in. I'll help. I'm here to serve the Lord. And yes, it is a tuition based. I mean, we pay uh, employees and in, including the professors and for all the uh, software and overhead. And don't forget in 2023, we are having a, a symposium, a summer symposium at the Colorado campus. And it'll be outstanding. We also have, I'll be doing uh, some seminars at some local churches here in Colorado as well. You could watch those online. And I'm also doing um, the conference in St. Louis, outside of St. Louis, on the other side of the the St. Uh, Missouri, Illinois uh, uh, border. <laughs> Drive past, you know, it's just right outside of St. Louis. You're, on, you're in Illinois, Fairview Heights, Illinois is at a, at a Bible church over there. We're having our annual conference in July with uh, Dr. Uh, Lou Priolo, and it will be on the topic of conflict resolution. Outstanding. The best I've ever read. This professor is outstanding. So I invite you to all of those things. Just get in touch with me. I need you to actually text me. I have a text messaging uh, phone number. You can't call it, but you can text it, 970 510 0055 just text me and say hey i want to set up an appointment uh, you can go to biblicalcounselingacademy.com and reach out uh, through the contact us there biblicalcounselingacademy.com or text me 970-510-0055 love you guys talk to you next time bye for now Thank you for listening to the Biblical Counseling Podcast. You can learn more at jeffchristensen.org. That's jeffchristensen.org. And be sure to share this podcast with a friend. Well, may the Lord richly bless you. We'll see you next time. Bye for now.